So FM24 Early Access has been out now for just over a week. And if I know this community, I know it doesn't take people very long to become really good at this game. They find all the little quirks, all the little hacks. And so with that in mind, I wanted to find out what tactical setups people are rocking with, what shapes, what mentalities, how they're using the positional play, which is updated in this year's engine. And I thought the best way to do this was to get you guys to send me your tactics. And in today's video, we're going to have a look at some. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another FM24 video. Today, we're talking all things tactics. With the new game coming out and with some updates to the match engine, there's new positional play, there are new set pieces, there's also some new roles and some tweaks to existing roles in the match engine. People are needing to change, tweak, maybe start afresh with the tactics that they're using in this year's game. With this in mind, I wanted to explore what people are using. I wanted to find out what the most effective tactics are and maybe see if we can spot some trends. To do so, as I mentioned before, I have asked you guys to submit your tactics. I put this tweet out over on X to give it its correct name there so that Elon doesn't cancel me. Sorry, Elon. I called it Twitter, I think. Sorry. I also asked you guys to describe the way that your tactic is working, what's so great about it, and show me some of the results that you're able to achieve. We'll also load it into my save so that we can have a talk through, see if we can spot some trends, and hopefully this will be useful for you guys. You can then use these tactics in your save if you want to. I'm also going to share a link in the comments section. I'll make it the pinned comment with all of these tactics available to download with the creator's permission, of course. And then if you really like one, you can use it in your saves and hopefully get some wins. Does that sound good? I hope it does. If this is the type of video that you like, if you think this is going to be enjoyable and maybe even useful for you, please do subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video too. And maybe we'll do something similar for some other aspects of Football Manager. I think though, let's get into this first submission and it is from, it's from Breezy. A good friend of the channel is Breezy. We'll put his link on the screen here, look to his Twitch channel. And we're going to have a look at a tactic that Breezy's been using with his Dortmund team in the beta and achieving some pretty good results. This here is the tactic. And when I asked him to describe why this tactic is so effective, he says, he says Sula and the inverted fullback creates a solid back three with Schlotterbeck and Milenkovic. Malassia and Ben Sabaini pushes into midfield alongside Emre Chan, creating a 3-2-4-1 when attacking. The end result is four attacking players creating chances for Allaire, who is an absolute freak in front of goal. I'm just going to say that that's probably because he used to be a West Ham player. Right, Breezy? You know what I'm talking about. The positional play and transition from defence to attack is so much fun to watch in the engine. That's, that's how he types it, by the way. That wasn't just me. And you can see here, these are some of the results that he's been able to achieve. There's a lot of greens in there. And it's quite a conventional shape, just the 4-3-3, which is, by the way, what I've been using in the Newcastle save over on Twitch. Perhaps in today's video, I'll show you that tactic as well as one of our showcase tactics. But a 4-3-3... I seem to see a bit of a trend here. Lots of people using it. Maybe that's because people have always used it, but it seems to be a lot of these submissions and maybe that's because it's really good this year. We'll have a look at the roles as well. The results here though look brilliant. Now it's Dortmund. You'd expect them to win a lot of games in Germany, but I can see some good results in the Champions League as well. He's Although, he, look, it, although it does appear that his Champions League group has been quite easy. I can see Shakhtar, uh, Sparta Prague and Feyenoord as your Champions League group. To be fair... That I can see why you're winning those games. But there's a lot of greens, and that to me tells me that this is a successful tactic. Let's load it into my Newcastle save here. Look, the Breezy Dortmund 4 3 3, and have a look at this and just have a look at some of the roles that are being used. As we mentioned, it's a really conventional shape. It's the 4 3 3 with this sort of triangle in the midfield. I'm sure all of you have used this before. Now, the things that I like about this one that make it a little bit quirky and a little bit different is. This inverted wing back on the left hand side, which I suppose would be, let me just do a best 11 with my team here. Now, bear in mind, it might fit better for Breezy's team. And he mentioned some of the players that are involved with Emre Chan in that midfield, etc. But I think you're looking at like Kieran Trippi on the right hand side, the inverted fullback, the new role in this year's game, tucking in to make a back three, perhaps, or even he kind of talks about Sula dropping in to create this, uh, this three at the back here. But I'd have Dan Byrne on this side. So he's got inverted fullbacks, inverted wingback, inverted fullback, a ball winner in the midfield. Loads of the best midfielders in the game, by the way, are naturally ball winners, which might surprise you. Like Sandro Tonali, if you look at his roles, really well suited to being a ball winning midfielder, which maybe isn't what you'd expect him to be. Similar with Florentino Luis, also really good as that ball winning midfielder, someone I've signed in this Newcastle save. I think Bruno's pretty good at it as well, actually. If you put him down here, look, 
Maybe not so much for Bruno Guimaraes, but ball winning midfielder I think could be quite useful this year. And then the other things that I like is he's gone pretty old school. Just out and out wingers on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. Probably not Joel Linton for me, to be completely honest. But maybe you'll see like a Harvey Barnes on this right-hand side, Almiron down the left-hand side on his left foot. And then a target forward, which it's very West Ham. <laughs> I'm going to say it here. He's got Alaire. Isaac would do a great job of that as well. So just positive mentality. In possession instructions here, look, so slightly higher tempo. Play out of defence. He's got an underlap going on on the left-hand side, which is quite fun. In transition, pretty routine, I'm going to say. Distributing to the centre-backs and playing out from there. And then out of possession, a high line and a high defensive line. Nothing outrageous. They're doing the pressing trap, trapping outside rather than inside. And then trying to trigger the press slightly more often. So again, pretty routine, pretty simplistic in terms of instructions, but it's clearly effective. I like it. This tactic will be available in the pinned comment in the comment section down below if you want to go and try and use it in your saves. Let's move through to the second one. And up next, we have another 4-3-3. Pedro, thank you very much for submitting this tactic here. And this time it's a 4-3-3 with Ostersund playing in Sweden. Here it is on the screen, and it's quite similar in lots of ways to Breezy's 4-3-3 with Dortmund. It's actually maybe even closer to the tactic that I'm using here at Newcastle. It's a conventional shape with that triangle in the midfield. He has got an inverted fullback on the left-hand side, creating that back three, and then a complete wing-back on the right-hand side, bombing up and down that right-hand side, you'd imagine, with those inverted wingers in front. He's gone for an advanced forward at, in the attack, a Metzala, an advanced playmaker, and a deep-line playmaker in the midfield. Set to defend as well. It's a role that I really like. I've found Bruno Grimaris is great at this DLP defend in there. Similarly, if we have a look at the results here, there's again lots of really nice green results and there's some really big wins as well. I'm noticing 5-1 wins against some Swedish teams that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. A 6-0 win. So recently some big wins there. We'll ignore that 1-0 loss to Ogrite, uh, which was away from home. So maybe we'll let you off that one. But more recently picking up some big wins. That that May, where he's won every game, he's won all five games in May there, is particularly impressive. Let's load it into our save here and have a look at it in a little bit more detail. It is the, he's called it the Medio Defensivo, which is a cool name. It's a Tiki Taka tactical style. And as I show you here, look, here are some of the roles. It would actually fit really nicely, I think, with our Newcastle save, with Dan Byrne being that inverted fullback and becoming a third centre-back alongside Botman and Cher, with Trippier bombing on a little bit more down the right-hand side. I think it could be really good. In fact, it is very similar to what I'm using here. If we have a look at the instructions, really high tempo on this one with the underlap on both of our right-hand side and our left-hand side with a, a fairly narrow attacking width. In transition, Again, pretty routine. Short kicks for distribution, distributing to those centre-backs with the counter and the counter press on. And then, oh look, it's a mid-block line of engagement. So that's slightly different, isn't it? With that higher line, that higher defensive line, very squeezed in in the, uh, the middle of the pitch here. But clearly it's working. He's got those great results with it. And on a positive mentality with this, I think, ticky-tacker tactical style. I'm a, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of how similar they are, actually. And I think I'm going to jump in here to show you my tactic. I know that this is about you guys sending me your tactics, but I'm going to show you mine here because it is so similar to this one that I think it kind of fits with going at this point here. I'll show you my best 11 with it as well, rather than these ones on here. It's something like this. It is a 4-3-3, and I've got a complete wing back on the left-hand side. I've got Valentin Barco bombing up and down here. His average rating's been great, by the way. Last five, he's got a 7.5 look. Really good young defender. He's in all of our, our, our videos where we talk about players to go and sign. I've got Trippi as a wing back. I have thought about going with that inverted fullback role for Dan Byrne at some point, but with Barco and getting forward, I quite like it. I've got a midfield three with a DM, a Metzala, and a central midfielder. Bruno playing as this DM is really good. Joel Linton in this role as well. I've also got Florentino Luis, who's played lots of games. And uh, Almiron Barnes, both inverted, although inside forward, inverted winger. And then Alexander Izak is just the advanced forward. He's got 11 goals so far this year. It's pretty, pretty run of the mill, to be completely honest with you. Here's the instructions if you wanted to use them. By the way, this tactic is available on the Patreon. To give it its proper name, the Claytreon, which is a paid service monthly fee, which gives you all of my tactics, all of my the views in the game, all of our save files, and also supports the channel massively. You get your name at the end of the videos too. Thank you to all the Claytreon members. If you want this tactic, this is where my one is going to be, but everyone else's will be in the comment that is pinned down below the, uh, the video for today. 
Just wanted to show you this one. I also like the, the attacking mentality. It's working quite well. We're second in the league going into January. Look, end of December here. It's going nicely. We're getting lots of really good results. Let's move on to our third submitted tactic. Okay, so next up we have this submitted by Kent, which is a 4-2-3-1 that he is using with Arsenal. Again, it's a pretty conventional shape, isn't it, in Football Manager? The 4-2-3-1, it's almost memed in how effective it is. If you, when in doubt, go for the 4-2-3-1 Gegenpress. Well, Kent here has got himself a 4-2-3-1 that has an inverted wing back with Zinchenko on the left-hand side. Pretty realistic. He's using Tomiyasu on the right-hand side as a fullback. The central defenders is fun rather than using those ball-playing defenders. He's got Declan Rice playing as a Segundo Volante alongside Jorginho at the moment with a winger on the left and an inside forward on the right hand side, which is Bukayo Saka coming in to join Martinelli as his main striker. Now, what he says about this and why he thinks it's so great is that he's been using this with Arsenal. Obviously, it's a basic 4-2-3-1, but uses a 2-2 in build up to get six forward, which is what you want to do. You create those overloads by how many players are in your attacks and what is usually five versus what is usually five defenders. So he's noticing that the AI are using five defenders against him. It sees a lot of spare men on the wing leading to some nice tapping goals from crosses and cutbacks. Dominant first halves usually before I shut the game down in the second half. He tried something different versus Liverpool and failed miserably, which is always nice to admit, isn't it? Results I liked because it was from a period with 10 games in 32 days. These are the results on the screen here then that he's managed to achieve. A little bit of a snapshot of his best ones. And in that, you can see some lovely results in there. You see that he talks about that Liverpool defeat, which is the one defeat on there. The 2-0 loss at home, which is a bit of a yikes, but can happen when you try and switch things up. I'm sure we've all experienced that, haven't we? But... A 5-1 win against Sevilla in the Champions League. 5-1 win against Brighton away from home as well. That's no mean feat. Although I've seen that Brighton sometimes do struggle. I've noticed in people's saves this year. With such a good team there and so much money to spend. It's weird that they don't seem very good compared to how they are in real life. Anyway, a good win against Newcastle. And I know how good they are because I'm using them. Uh, a 1-1 draw away at Villa after beating them 1-0. He's played them twice. One's in the Carabao Cup, the quarterfinal. Most recently, a 3-1 win against Brentford. Yeah, it's working quite nicely. Let's load it in here, look, in our Newcastle to save, to have a proper look at it. It is, it's in this folder here. It is the 4231 from Kent, our good friend here. 4231, it would put, let's see who it would pick in my save here. Pick without, let's pick the best 11. Bruno Guimaraes in that Volante role, which I could see being quite important. It is then a 4231 Gegenpress, as we talked about, almost memed by how effective it is. It seems like it's effective this year. And I think a lot of your tactics from previous years will be effective, but also maybe make a couple of tweaks to them is the way to go. The in possession instructions on the screen here, again, pretty run of the mill, that higher, slightly higher tempo, shorter passing, playing out from defense, working the ball into the box, which might be the best way to go rather than, I mean, with us, it'd be good with Isaac, but with Martinelli in there, rather than hitting those early crosses, try and get that tiki tacker around the box to create a good chance for Saka or for Martinelli. I'd be intrigued to see how many goals each of your strikers have scored. I'm noticing that you do have Victor Osserman by the results there. So I'm sure you're scoring loads because he is, he's my guy. Is, is big victor. In transition, the instructions are very similar. I think these are the same as the ones we've seen on other tactics today. Just that distribute to centre-backs and just don't take long kicks. So you can do all of the different distribution types there. Out of possession, high line, high defence, high line of engagement, high defensive line. Step up more with the defensive line too. Try and push up a little bit to squeeze things defensively. I like it. It's pretty routine, but if it works, it works. This one will also be in the link down below in the comments if you want to go and try it in your saves or maybe just have a look at what you're using. Maybe you could get that Segundo Volante into your midfield. So effective last year. Seems like it's a thing this year as well. I think it might be the most OP role. I don't know. Debate me on that one, but I think it might be. Although CM Attack might be back. Let's move through to our next tactic. And that tactic is another 4-2-3-1 submitted by our good friend Gambling Blues. He's using Chelsea at the moment and achieving some pretty good results. He says about this 4-2-3-1 then, it is a 4-2-3-1 double DM AM wide. So he's using defensive midfielders rather than those central midfielders, which seems to be the, the most... Well, it's the default way that it would set you up in a 4-2-3-1 in-game since last year. I play to try to win back the ball in the centre of the pitch and make you play around me. So he wants his opposition to play around them winning the ball in the centre of the pitch. Usually plays Colwell at left back, is an inverted fullback on defend to keep a back three 
with your DMs and Reese James ahead of that. So again, it's something that a lot of people are using. It's very trendy in real life football at the moment. Using that inverted fullback to create a back three seems to be really effective in FM24. With either James or the or the Volante, a Segundo Volante DM pushing forward to make a front five. So again, another Segundo Volante in this one. Pretty much best in class or thereabouts, both offensively and defensively in the Prem. And he has actually included some screenshots here, which I'll flash up on the screen, of things like the chances created, of the chances conceded, the results, as we'll look at in a second, but the shots against and the XG table too, all in his favour. This tactic seems to be performing pretty well. The results show that as well. If we have a look at them here, they are a sea of green. As you maybe would expect with a save that someone's doing with Chelsea. But again, they're really struggling. If I just jump into my Newcastle save here, in December, Chelsea find themselves 16th. So do you know what? Maybe this tactic is good. They've only won four of their first 17 and they've already sacked Pochettino. They brought in John Terry as the caretaker manager, in fact, in my save at the moment. So do you know what? These results here might not be some type of fluke. This might be a really well-organized team. I'm actually seeing a lot of these results are to nil. There's a 3-0 against Brighton, 5-0 Copenhagen, 3-0 West Ham, 6-0 against Blackburn. This is, what well, year are we in here? 2024. So Blackburn have got themselves promoted to the Premier League, second season here. Most recently, a 4-1 pretty comprehensive win against Spurs in the Premier League at home. They've. Uh, is there any other really good results away from home? They lost to Manchester United at home, which is a bit rubbish. They lost to Arsenal as well, away from home, 4-1. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. They are here, Chelsea, top of the league. Let's have a look at this tactic then by loading it into our Newcastle save here and have a look at some of the instructions and how it differs actually from Kent's 4-2-3-1. The big one that I'm noticing is the use of a shadow striker in behind that main number nine. I actually want to see what does my assistant manager here pick as the best 11. It would be Almiron as the shadow striker, which I'm not sure is the best, but it's a clean slate tactical setup. So some of these instructions might be a little bit more jazzy. Focusing play through the middle as he did reference beforehand. It's a shorter passing directness, working the ball into the box in transition. Holding shape when possession has been won rather than countering, which is different to anything we've seen so far, I do believe. Distributing to any of our back four, which becomes a back three eventually. And then out of possession, very simple instructions, but a mid-block line of engagement and a much higher defensive line. Very squeezed in on the pitch here with nothing in terms of instructions for, for any of these down the side. I like it. It's slightly different. Two wingers holding the width on the on the outside here and advance forward. Just the fullback and then the inverted wing back on the right hand side. A little bit different. If you want to use this one, it will be in that comment down below the stream too. But let's move through to our final tactic of today's video. And that tactic is back to a 4-3-3 submitted by Leone. Thank you, Leone, for submitting this one. It is an attacking 4-3-3 that she is using with Bournemouth. It's I mean, so far then, all of our tactics today have either been a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, which in themselves are not that dissimilar, are they? It's just a, a defensive midfielder rather than an attacking one. And seems to be the most effective. When I ask for people to send me their best tactics, the fact that all of them are these, is that an interesting point? If you're using something else, are you going wrong? Or have you found something that is different? By the way, if you want me to do a second one of these videos where you guys have the chance to submit some more, I'm going to put the link to submit your tactics into the comments or in, sorry, into the description of today's video. And maybe we'll do a follow up on this, especially if you've got something that is slightly more out there. Maybe you're using a three at the back or a five at the back, something like that. I'd love to do a second one if you guys want to watch it. If this gets a good reception, maybe we'll go and do that because it's a really, I find it really interesting myself. So hopefully you guys do as well. Into Leone's 4-3-3 here then, it's quite simple in terms of defence. We've just got wing backs on support, all playing defenders, and then in the midfield three, a DLP, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and a CM on attack. Now, this is what I, I wonder. I wonder how effective that CM attack has been. I think it might be, I think it might be back. I'm using at the moment a CM on support with my tactic, which is usually Joel Linton. In fact, if I do best 11 here, that's probably the best way to show it. I'm using Joel Linton on, on support, but I wonder if I wanted to go more attacking, if I put him onto CM attack, especially when I maybe go and buy some other players, I wonder if it's back. It was really good at the start of last year and also at the end of FM22, it seemed to be the real deal. Really liked it. In front of that though, pretty run of the mill for Leone. It's an inside forward, an inverted winger, which I've noticed is Lionel Messi. 
for Bournemouth. So I think we've gone quite a way into the future here with Bournemouth and maybe that's why it's so effective. But I suppose you have to be really good to get to this point here. And then Evan Ferguson leading the line as an advance forward. Let's have a look at some of these results because, I mean, I've been hearing about this save anyway. It's unbelievable. We've got a lovely unbeaten run here look on the screen where it starts with a 3-0 win against Norwich in February, ending with a Champions League win against Manchester City in the Champions League final. So yeah, this, this tactic is working and it's so routine, conventional, 4-3-3, but Bournemouth winning the Champions League in 2025... I wonder if you should go and use this in your saves. What a what a team she's built as well. A 2-1 win against Chelsea in the FA Cup final. It's working. What does she say about it? How does she describe it? Very simple, actually. She says, used with Bournemouth, 4-3-3. The attack just seems to flow. Goals galore. Fast-paced, direct football. Quadruple, invincible season two. Do you know what? Fair play, I think, is what we'll say for this one. As always, with all of the other tactics, this one is available for you guys to download in that pinned comment under today's video. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. I've got loads more already, and I want to hear from you guys. If you want to submit a tactic, that form is in the description, and perhaps we'll go and do another one of these because this has been fun. I've enjoyed it. A little bit different to what we usually do as well. But if you did find it useful, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And most importantly, have a lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.